this one for so many reasons. Because in October, the real Godfather Harlem left federal prison after nearly 40 years. Guy Fisher, the first black owner of the Apollo Theater at the height of the funk era, and a celebrity to black New Yorkers in the 1970s. His association with heroin kingpin Nicky Barnes landed him a life sentence without parole in 1983. But Fisher flipped the script, earning a historic four academic degrees in prison, writing nine books and mentoring dozens of inmates. Now he's ready to tell his remarkable redemption story. And one of the baddest women to ever grace the stage is making it happen. Joining me now is actress, producer, director, the incomparable, invincible, and whatever other adjective I can think of, Debbie Allen. And of course, the real godfather of Harlem, Dr. Guy Fisher, PhD. Uh, Guy Fisher, uh, let me ask you, is your story one of regret because of all that you were involved in in Harlem, or is it one of redemption to tell people no matter what, they can take a bad situation and redeem themselves? I think in terms of what you just asked me, I think that I, there is no remorse in terms of, in terms of the fact of what I have achieved while I'm incarcerated. Plus it opened my eyes to helping the youth of America, as opposed to me being a victim of selling poison to the youth of America, which was, as you know, as well as I know, a horrible situation. But at the same time, here and now, I'm looking at the future and the youth of tomorrow. They are so smart now. I have to even check myself to say, damn, how old was I before I learned what they're talking about right now? So in answer to your question, I have to say that my incarceration opened several other doors for me to be what's embedded deep inside me. And when it came to helping individuals, and I reached out to Debbie Allen, and I said, Debbie, I need some. I need books, and I need to be able to write stories. But without being able to do those things, I'd have still been sitting here with a college degree, with the PhD, because I told myself from the very beginning, I was never gonna spend the rest of my life in jail. I was gonna do something to make them throw me out. So that when I said that, I meant it in the form of associates, bachelors, masters, and my PhD in sociology, that they were walking out the front door down the line. And Debbie, when she came along, she sent me several, several books to read and several books to use as a means in which to teach the youth of America how to write screenplays, how to write books. So that level is something I would have never achieved had if I hadn't come to jail. As, as far as the, my coming to jail, I have so many positive things to look forward to now that I'm no longer in prison, now that I'm no longer incarcerated. Yes, I took the time and wrote 10 books, but I also was able to teach dozens of guys. I mean, so many that it was over So you began guys. turning around a lot of things, even in jail. Let, let me go to you a minute, Debbie, because I, I, his sound was a little hazy in my ear. But uh, among the dozens of hats you wear, uh, uh, Debbie, so many of us first met you as dancer Lydia Grant in the film Fame and uh, in his television version. I, for one, remember your big Emmy win in the show 1983. But you also got uh, the slavery drama Amistad made in 1997. You were a U.S. cultural ambassador for dance under George Bush, executive director of Grey's Anatomy, on and on. National Action Network has honored you. And uh, you're the queen of Netflix right now. Two holiday themed <laughs> specials, one theme of all about your dance school in L.A. What brought you, what brought you to this story of Dr. Fisher's life, your next project? Why do you think this is an important story to tell? It's important. Thank you so much, Al, for having us on your show. It's important because it is a story of redemption and it is a story of possibility. And it's also a story of the truth of what's happening in the penal system. I look at the incredible documentary that um, Ava DuVernay did, The 13th, 
that went through the history of mass incarceration and justice. And uh, today, right now, young people are struggling. And in the penal system, it just hasn't moved forward. We looked at racial, systemic racism in America. We're talking about it every day. And Guy Fisher is a walking example of surviving that, coming through a fire, reborn. And that's very positive. Gene Anthony Ray on Fame introduced us. They're related. And I read his book, uh, Vicious Circle. And I knew it was powerful and dynamic. And right now, I think right now what Guy needs is I'm here to reintroduce him into our industry, to get him a book deal, a documentary, and a film television series that would showcase the real truth of what happened to him, not only as part of Nikki Barnes' counsel, the counsel, but his journey in the penal system and becoming Dr. Fisher from drug lord to doctor. That is an incredible story for our young people to understand. Now, Dr. Fisher, I, one of the things that grabbed me in, in looking at your book, one of your books, you wrote several, is that you can get a message through to people that feel that living a, a hard life in the streets and crime uh, uh, was the only way and there's some manhood in that. Nobody could deny you were the ultimate manhood in that type of definition. But you said no real manhood is in developing yourself and you actually taught people in prison as you worked toward a PhD. I mean, I don't know anyone that could address that crowd and mentality in many uh, communities better than you who was the, the, the guy in that area and now saying, wait a minute, this is the way we need to go. In terms of the way we need to go, I have to, I have to say that when you are undereducated and you know nothing truly about life itself in terms of uh, being able to find a legitimate job or, you know, and without education, what can you do but become someone that could just lift a whole lot of weights and, and work? But in this situation here, by being able to go to school, I was able to open up doors to other inmates who were like myself, but a whole lot younger. So when I told them, no, I didn't know this and no, I don't know that. And as a kid, I was a classroom jester because I would rather say, when a, if a teacher asked me a question, well, Guy Fisher, what do you think about this? I would say, man, don't ask me, ask your mother when you get home, because I don't know. I don't know, but now I understand that that without knowledge, without knowing, without school, we're lost in space forever. So in this situation, as you ask me now, it made it easy for me to share what was inside of me. The only thing I never kept was hatred. Hatred was the only thing that freed me while I was incarcerated, learning how to write this, learning how to write that, going back to college to learn other things. Without that education, I'd have been still in the streets, maybe. But I quit the streets when I purchased the file for the final theater while we was on trial. So here and now, my whole different world is, deals with the youth of America. All right, I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much, Ed Debbie Allen. Always great to see you. And Dr. Guy Fisher, we look forward to seeing the story. My thanks to both of you.